25 years ago, Toyota and Honda were going at it with each other to create the best performance cars out there. Fast forward to 2023, we now have the 11th generation FL5 Honda Civic Type R and the brand new Toyota GR Corolla in Circuit Edition. That's a four-cylinder turbo. This is a three-cylinder turbo. Both are manuals and both have three exhaust sips with a combined exhaust sip count of six. Let's go for a drive and figure out which one is better and which one is actually the more fun car. Civic Type R, we have a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, basically the same motor we had in the last generation Honda Civic Type R, but with a brand new turbo. We have 315 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque, which is a gain of nine horsepower and 15 pound feet of torque from the last generation. And also, that torque is made much faster as it's much lower down in the RPM range. The car is longer, wider, and lower than before. So there's just a ton more space to work with now. There's more cooling performance, and it fits much wider tires with that wider stance it has. And the new Type R is sitting on a brand new chassis. It's much more rigid, and it feels a lot more stable than the 10th gen. In the GR Corolla, we do have the Circuit Edition today, which is a little bit different from the core. There's a carbon composite roof, you do get different leather trimming in here. You do get different fake vents outside. Not huge differences, no mechanical differences in Canada at least. And of course it is very different from the regular Toyota Corolla. We do get a 1.6 liter inline three cylinder turbocharged, of course, which is something that you don't really find in many other cars. The only other car that I really know with the three cylinder is an i8 and of course a GR Yaris. Basically the same motor in here, except they do have a lot more room with the uh, GR Corolla, so they were able to make improvements to make it more powerful. And this now pushes 300 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. It doesn't have nearly as much low-end torque as a Civic. If you step on it and you're not in the correct gear, it does take a little bit of time to load because you don't have that extra cylinder. So you do have to wind it out. So right now, second gear. And all the way to red line, 7,000 RPM. And yeah, this thing is really fast. It's incredible how Toyota were able to squeeze 300 horsepower out of a little three cylinder 1.6 liter. And also because of the fact that you have to wind it out, it makes it more entertaining to drive. You do have to be higher up in RPM for that power. And it's really rewarding because you have to work for it. This car is also only 15 pounds lighter than the Type R which is surprising given how small this car is, but it does have the all-wheel drive, so it makes sense. And around these corners, it just has so much grip. This thing is incredible. Downshift the second, very good brakes, a little bit of understeer, and then the rear wheels kick in, and this thing just handles so well, I can't get the smile off my face. All right, plus R mode. Let's do a launch control. A little bit of revs, a little bit of wheel spin. Oh my god, this thing's fast. For a front wheel drive car, this thing has an immense amount of grip. Somehow they just managed to put all that power down just to the front wheels. A little gas, and this thing launches so nicely. This is crazy for a three cylinder car how fast this thing launches. Yeah, this thing launches harder than the Type R, obviously because there's just much more grip from the extra set of wheels that is pushing power down. But from a roll, it's not as quick as the Type R for sure. Because that car has a little bit more, more power and there's about 5% less powertrain loss because it's only a front wheel drive car. In a roll, the Civic Type R in theory should win every single time. But from a dig, the GR Corolla, I'm pretty sure will win every single race even though the Type R will be reeling it in by the time you're at the quarter mile, you already won. 
the all-wheel drive in this GR Corolla is game-changing. You do have this rotary knob down here where you can change how much power is being sent either to the front or back. You can have it 60% in the front, 40 back, or uh, track mode, which is 50-50 by pushing it. Um, and then you also have 30-70, which can send up to 70% of the power in the rear. Doesn't mean it always will, because Toyota engineers wanted it to still feel like a front wheel drive car. So when you do enter a corner, you can see that it does send most of the power to the front wheels, but upon corner exiting, the power will be shifted to the rear wheels. So you have that all wheel drive corner stability benefit. Yet it still kind of feels like a front wheel drive car. You won't necessarily oversteer too much and it really makes it very confident inspiring. Like you feel like you're invincible driving this thing. All that along with a Torsen limited slip differential in the front and back just makes this thing so grippy around these corners. It just shifts power exactly where you need it to be. In America, if you do get the core, um, you can get it without the performance package, which doesn't have a limited slip differential, but you have to get that package if you do live in the United States, because who would buy a GR Corolla without the LSDs? Thankfully in Canada, they know we like to have a little more fun, so they come as standard. Oh my God, there's so much grip around this hairpin. And around this one. And that blow off valve. I can literally hear this thing all day. Sounds way better than the Honda Civic Type R in my opinion. And I really don't like that fake engine noise that you cannot turn off in plus R mode in the Type R. Meanwhile, this is all just natural engine noise. And of course, blow off, really nice. Honda has also increased the RPM of which the active exhaust valves open to heighten the four cylinder engine sounds. It sounds rather quiet, but you do get this fake pumped in audio, which I'm not exactly a big fan of. Ooh, very nice around these corners. Give me a second. Very good brakes as well. We do get brand bills in front. Oh my God, this thing just rotates. But yeah, the fake engine noise, not my favorite, but you can turn it off because we do not just only have sport, comfort, and a plus R mode, we now have an individual mode, which you can customize exactly what settings you want, such as the engine, the steering, the suspension, the engine sound, the rev match, and the gauge. Let's put the engine sound in comfort instead of plus R mode and listen. I think that sounds much better than the fake engine noise. When you do have it in plus R mode, which I do kind of want to drive on, you can't change the engine sound anymore. So you're stuck to hearing that. I'm sure there will be aftermarket workarounds in the future for the FL5 to deactivate the fake engine noise. Unlike the Toyota Corolla, this does have adaptive dampers, which you can control in individual mode. The gap between the most stiff mode and the most softest mode is much more apparent now in the brand new Type R compared to the last gen, which you couldn't really feel as much. Which means you could dial in the exact amount for each track or pavement surface. Except in plus R mode, it's always in the stiff setting and it's actually much, much stiffer than before. A little bit stiffer than the Corolla. The Corolla doesn't get any fancy adaptive dampers like you find in the Honda Civic. It's just one setting, I guess, and I don't have any complaints about it. It's stiff, but not overly stiff. It's not like a Veloster N where it really gets uncomfortable. This thing is exactly how I'd like it to be. Enough for a track day, but also still very livable as a daily car. This thing is just a little bit more raw. It is more old school, definitely. Less tech going on. It's old school, it's charming, and it's unapologetically fun because of that. Now this one, oh my God, that rotation from the back, you can feel this car just utilizing that rear wheel to just yaw the car right where you want it to go. There's no fake engine noises. There's a manual handbrake, unlike the Honda Civic Type R where you get the electronic one. It reminds me a lot of like early day JDM cars where there's really not much to it, but it's just fun. It's like a Subaru kind of. Even the heated seats are pretty much like the super heated seats, the way that it's positioned. And in a world where everything is kind of digitized now, I really appreciate how just raw and fun this car is. It might not have a nice interior as a Honda Civic, which 
definitely hands down has the better interior, but I don't really care. Like you can make this a rock. You can make this entire interior cardboard, but just because of how fun it is, I really don't care. And it's actually not even that bad. It's pretty nice in here. You do actually get suede just like you do in the Honda Civic. You do also get a few different drive modes in here. You do get a custom mode just like you do in the Type R. You have a sport mode, a normal mode, and an eco, which I'm not exactly sure what that does, especially when you're shifting gears yourself. The transmission in this Corolla is perfect. I love this shifter. It's short, not as short as the Type R one, but it just feels really nice in the palm of your hands. Downshift the second. And it's just how precise it is just to get into the gates of other gears. The clutch is also really good. It's longer than the Honda Civic Type R. They also got rid of a center console in here, so nothing gets in the way when you're trying to shift gears. They do have active rev matching, just like the Honda Civic. But what I like is the fact that they have a manual button that you can literally just click to activate or deactivate it. Meanwhile, in the Civic Type R, you kind of have to dig through the menus to turn off active rev match. But what's cool about the Civic Type R is that you can adjust how aggressive the rev match is. You can have it in comfort mode or sport mode, which means it reacts differently depending on what you choose. The transmission though is pretty much identical to the last generation Civic Type R, except there's a lighter flywheel now and they changed the shifter linkage. The shifter is short, precise, and it just goes into gear very accurately. I have absolutely no complaints about the shifter in the Type R. It is very easy to roll through gears, second gear. Yeah, this is really good. And yeah, this thing's fast. The clutch is also very short compared to the Toyota Corolla GR. And how it feels from factory is perfect. It engages nicely and it's much better than the clutch on the Honda Civic Si. I love the clutch and the shifter in both cars. They're both pretty much perfect. I really have no complaints about them. The steering isn't as edgy or as sharp as the Honda per se, but it still does an amazing job through these corners. Both cars are suited with two-piece, four-piston brakes up front, and they both stop really well. Pushing the Type R through these corners is so fun, especially out here on these back roads. The extra rigidity makes it feel way better than before, especially with these dual access struts. This thing just eats up these corners like nothing. The steering is very nicely weighted. I think it got a little bit heavier than before, but I love exactly how it feels. You have so much grip from that front limited slip differential. And it just carves through these corners like nothing. Hairpin coming up. It's a steep uphill one too. And this is where you're gonna see how the GR does better because there is more grip to give, especially with that all wheel drive. Coming up this one, we're definitely gonna lose a little bit of grip. Yeah. But still, for a front wheel drive car, this thing grips intensely. They're both just immaculate cars to drive in dry weather. But if you do live in a place that snows or rains a lot, like just how it just started pouring in Toronto, Canada, the GR might be more fun actually because you have that all wheel drive, you can oversteer it slightly, um, and you just have that extra confidence because of that grip. And this is where I wanna show you why the all wheel drive is better than the front wheel drive that you have in the Civic because it's pretty steep and it's sharp. And in the Civic, you saw that it does lose a little bit of grip up here, but this all wheel drive just rotates you around, doesn't even struggle at all. They both do the exact same fuel mileage of 24 miles per gallon combined. And they're both equipped with either Toyota Sense or Honda Sensing, which is a suite of safety features that includes autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane tracing assist, blind spot monitors, rear cross traffic, and of course, adaptive cruise control without low speed follow, obviously because it's manual. The seating position in the GR is good. Nothing that much to complain about, except how high you sit in the GR. This is the lowest setting that it goes to and I still feel kind of like I'm sitting on top of the car. They are very supportive though and bucketed really nicely, but I just like how much lower you can sit in the Type R. I feel like the cabin completely surrounds me rather than me sitting on top of the car, kind of like how you do in the Corolla. Both cars have a digital dashboard. Um, they both look really good. I don't really know which one I like more because they both just do a really good job. No heads up display in either cars, which is expected. The animations are all crispy and sharp, and I like 
the fact that you can bounce off the RPM like that instead of it just cutting power. They do it in both cars and it just just a really cool thing that it does. Around these corners again, it's wet now. We have it in rear wheel drive bias mode. It feels amazing. There's so much confidence driving this thing. Like this might not be as serious of a track car as the Type R. The Type R will probably push down a better time on the Nurburgring, but I don't know. This, this thing just feels more fun. That car got much more mature now compared to the FK8. It's all grown up now. This thing is kind of the exact opposite. They just made it childish and I don't mean that in a bad way because it's just more fun like there's more emotions going on I'm just smiling and driving this thing everywhere the interior on the GR is basically a Corolla nothing really crazy good or bad about it you have your infotainment screen Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you do have the new Toyota UI which is a lot better than the old one there is a wireless charging unit there's heated seats no heated steering wheel in Canada although available in America, which is odd, even though it's colder here, and pretty basic materials. The cup holders are positioned perfectly so you don't hit your drinks when you're shifting, unlike in the Supra. The Type R interior is way nicer. Red carpeting, red suede bucket seats, very nice steering wheel. It does feel more premium here, but it's also missing heated seats, which is fine because you do get Alcantara, which always feels pretty warm. Again, while it's charging, you do have the standard Honda UI, which works really well. Nice vents that run across. You do get a center console in here, and it just has a lot more space as it is a bigger car. In the back of the Civic, you can actually fit people way more comfortably than you can in the Corolla, which is actually pretty tight. Um, but you do only get four seats in the Civic, while you do get five seats in the Corolla but in general it's much smaller and a lot less comfortable or practical for anyone or anything to be hauled around in the Corolla. The exterior is nice in both cars. I personally like the GR Corolla look. They do both get wide bodies, huge wheel arches in the front and rear and it really differentiates them from the regular Corolla and regular Civic. The Type R no longer have tacked on fender flares. It's actually a custom wider panel piece now. It does get unique doors only for the Type R. Both cars can fit huge wheels. I've seen people run 11 inches wide in both these cars. The Circuit Edition GR does get a lovely little spoiler in the back, while every Type R gets the full on wing. And both cars get three exhaust tips, I guess three to signify three cylinders in the Corolla maybe, but the Type R, I don't know. It's always had three exhaust tips. Me personally, I like how both cars look a lot, but if I had to choose, I would take the GR Corolla exterior, but definitely the Type R interior. Type R has really grown up over the past generation. They literally took everything good out of that car and made it better. It looks more grown up, it's much more refined, luxurious, and way more mature. Meanwhile, the Corolla is kind of the exact opposite in terms of maturity. It is just raw, wild, and childish in a fun and playful way. It doesn't really have a very nice interior as a Type R, but most people wouldn't even give a damn about it because you can make the interior way worse and people would still buy it because of how good the car is. Even if you made the interior out of cardboard, I would still want one. It's unapologetically fun, thrilling, and I'd buy one if I could. The Type R is a more serious car. It's a car that I can daily while sipping tea in comfort mode and then throw it in plus R mode and absolutely tear up the Nürburgring in. It's faster, sharper, and handles better. But in terms of outright fun, it's pretty much tied with the Corolla because even though the Corolla is slightly slower, it is more playful and lively, especially with that all-wheel drive and when it starts to snow or rain. Type R is more ideal for kids or space if you are in an age group where you need that. While the Corolla is for people who don't really care about how many cubic feet of space they got in the back, but it's still capable of carrying passengers and cargo, it's just not as ideal to daily as the Civic Type R. They're both so fun and exciting though, and it's really the last hoorah of full combustion engine sports cars for both manufacturers at the dawn of the new world of electric cars. 
The adrenaline and excitement you get from either of these cars is just unreal. Both cars will be the benchmark for the hot hatch segment, and I love this rivalry between these manufacturers to showcase one of their most thrilling driving machines. I just wish they were possible to buy because both of these cars are extremely limited in North America. I want to buy both, and honestly, it's a good thing I can't get my hands on either of these because I'd hate to be in the position to choose between one for myself because they are both just so good. That's all guys, thanks for watching.